for the military. Yeah, family. I was wondering what you do about expi expirations, but if oh, it's, we if you got six coupons. months, that's, that's plenty of time to, to spend yeah, the coupon. They have to extend it that long because by the time it, they're shipped wherever, it takes a while mm -hmm. and all. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we've actually gotten letters back from people, on, people that use the coupons overseas uh -huh. thanking us and saying what a wonderful thing it is that we do this. But our program has grown so much now that we are looking for senior groups to take a base. What's that? What, what's that mean? Well, right now, the coupons come in, and Richard is in charge of, you know, four boxes have to go to this base in England, and so uh -huh. many to Germany and so forth. So we're looking for um, organizations to take a base. We would give them the base, the information, the contact person, set it up for them. They would collect the coupons, sort them, and mail them out themselves. Uh-huh. Which so. saves 11 bucks for everybody, too. Well, and there's... Uh, well, you save more than one box, the same base, too, right? Well, uh, some of them get two boxes, uh -huh. some of them one box. But, you know, there's different size shipping. You can do a big envelope that costs five something, I think, mm -hmm. on up. But it would just... Um, the program's getting bigger and bigger is what's happening. I have coupons that are mailed to me from Florida. Do you believe that? That's hard to believe. That come from Florida to me in the mail. Uh -huh. I have them from North County, people that mail them. Right here in Jamestown and Lakewood, people mail coupons. And you can put Plus, a, stuff a whole bunch in an envelope, probably. You know? Right. Plus, at Senior Council, people bring in coupons and, you know, all the senior groups. So we have a lot of coupons coming in. We oh. just ask that they cut them, though. Cut them, right. Cut them and kind of uh, yeah. lay them out in, in size because it has a lot to do with... Right. For getting as many as you packing can in a box, yeah, right, packing sure. them, right. yeah. You don't want yeah. a lot of paper, excess paper. No, no, <laughs> don't. We just ask everybody. Well, who would think coupons could be so valuable? But they are. Right. But they are. Well, they especially are. if you send a few thousand out of a box, I mean, they're handy. And besides helping the military, what we found is that it's given some of our senior citizens and some mm -hmm. of our disabled people something to do that makes them feel worthwhile uh -huh. at home. They don't have mm -hmm. to go outside. They just pick up their paper, clip the coupons, and they mail them into us. But we've had a lot of people that are involved, a lot of seniors that say, you know, this is a lifesaver for me. It gets me something to do to get my mind off of myself, and I'm doing something valuable for others. Well, I think that it's, it's a great plan because, as you say, it occupies people, among other things, keeps them busy, keeps them off the street. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we would like oh, yeah. them to come to our meetings, though, yes, to get we, them off the street and right. get, and get uh -huh. active well, in some you, of their you swing senior around. Groups. How many people uh, do you get out at a meeting? What, about 20, 30 people? Uh, probably about 30. Yeah, about 30. About 30. About 30. Yeah. It, it varies. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, we yes. never know what's going to be. Depends on the size of the group at which you're having your meeting, I assume, yeah. too. Right? We right. tried something new this year. What's that? Last Last month we had a trivia, kind of, uh, senior trivia, trivia day, trivia day, and uh, Stowe uh, seniors up there were nice enough to let us use their building, mm -hmm. and we had what ten? We had ten teams that participated in it, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And we 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 gave uh, hundred seventy five and fifty dollar prizes, but it, it was very uh, very informative. I think, and I think everybody enjoyed it. So mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna plan next year. Keep to going. Do that. We, we have a couple of callers. You want to take a call? Sure. Sure. Okay. Good morning, sure. caller. Thank you for waiting. Sure. Good morning, Reed. I have a question for your guests. With the baby boomers being the largest generation ever, could you maybe share what you think are some of the biggest challenges for that generation as they grow older? Money. Money. Yeah. Very. Medical definitely. bills. Yeah. Prescriptions. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm in that age group, the boomers. I'm not retired yet. I'm still working full-time, but I will retire in a couple of years. And I know from a lot of the people that I talk to in the organizations, they're on very stringent budgets. They only have Social Security. Um, money that they've saved up goes towards medical things that they need, even though they have some insurance. It's not always enough to pay for all their prescriptions. So I, I would say those are the biggest things. Medical. No Medical. Caller. Oh yeah. There you go, caller. Uh, that's that's a simple answer. What what do you think about um, as they grow? Did they need assisted living or uh, nursing homes? Do you think there's enough facilities in our area? Right now in our area, there are. I work in an assisted living. Mm -hmm. I I'm the life enrichment director at Emeritus at Lakewood. There are many places for assisted living to go, as well as nursing homes. We have plenty of that. Um, down the line, it's hard to tell what, what's going to be because it's always changing. Assisted living, when I started at Emeritus 12 years ago, was a big thing. We were one of the first ones to offer assisted living. And 
you just see a change in the level of care with people because you have people that come to assisted living that require no care and then you have people that come that need more care but can't be in a nursing home yet. So yeah. there's a need for assisted living. Tell me, there's a new one in Fredonia, isn't there? Just opened up fairly recently? Mm. Right across from the, there uh, isn't. I, the I Slammer. I, I, it's down that way. Big block of buildings there. Right. Mm -hmm. I heard about that one. I haven't been there to see it. Yeah. Well, I, can't, I can't remember what One of was. our dear friends, Mort Flexer, Flexer, who was on this program for many years, uh, he has uh, he has joined them, and he says he's very happy with them. Well, the good thing about assisted living is that all the assisted livings offer you a nice apartment, a private apartment. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are private anyways. They offer you all your meals are prepared so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to clean. You don't have to do your laundry unless you want to do your laundry. Most of them have buses that can transfer you to and from the doctors. Um, plus, Emeritus has activities mm -hmm. and other things that you can be involved in. So. They're good. They're a good place to be if you need any assistance, if you're getting a little fragile in your health, um, if you've lost a spouse and you don't want to be alone, they're an excellent place to go for How about care. meals? What do they do for meals? You get three meals a day. At Emeritus, they're served in the dining room. Mm -hmm. There's a certain time for them. You come and you have your meals, and they offer you a snack to take back to your room. What if somebody has Alzheimer's? They don't know how to get down to the meals. Is there anybody to help them? This is, um, all the facilities are different. Some people, some facilities have or communities rather, have special memory units. We do have a memory program at Emeritus. Um, at ours, people with Alzheimer's, which we have a few, mm -hmm. have a, a certain mm -hmm. care aide that is responsible, we call them a memory person, that gathers them up in the morning, they spend the day with this person. Um, so they get to, they build a relationship. Good. And they you know, take them down to their meals and they have them all day until they go home. Uh, what does this cost? Now, again, we're getting in a, a senior okay. money, you know. Okay. Um, at Emeritus, I, I can't really tell you the, the exact well, amount, well, no, but I can cost. give you an so estimate. 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 well, a year? We, ha we, offer, we offer respite care, uh -huh. which is about $95 a day with the road home. Uh -huh. It's uh, meant to be a brief stay from the hospital, a little bit of care you need, and then you go home. We have companion living. I believe that's about $1,800 a month, two people in a room. Mm -hmm. Then we have studio, one bedroom and two bedroom apartments. Depending on the location of where the apartment is in the building and what the level of care is, it usually starts out at about $2,300, $2,400 a month and goes up. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, I know it runs about 80000 a month to go mm -hmm. into one of the uh, like, like the absolutes or some right. of these places that give you intense care, they have to, right. or some medical too, I might add. Right. They will administer oxygen and uh, various other things. Right. Um, senior care is becoming a major issue in the world of seniors, though. Oh, it, yes, it's it so is. It's so expensive, and uh, more and more seniors are going bankrupt because of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, it's it's bank right. bankrupting most seniors, ultimately, if one or the other spouse needs specialized care. Right. Yeah, you're out. You're, you're, you're finished and you're on welfare before you know what hit you. A while back, they came out with long-term care insurance, so right. you could plan in case I needed to go to a nursing Which home. Which expires at 80, I might add. Is it? Well, some mm -hmm. people do have that. But another interesting <laughs> thing that people don't know about is if you're a veteran mm -hmm. or the spouse of a veteran, you have veteran benefits that you can look into. Uh -huh. And sometimes it, it is a, you know, a big help in staying at, at a location at a community. Okay, that's, that's good to know because mm -hmm. uh, a, lot, a lot of our uh, seniors are veterans. And also, <laughs> now, now I have to give a plug to Emeritus. Go ahead. Because you open the door. In July, we have Dining Services Month. Now, what is that? It's a special month to reflect on the dining, the people that take care of the dining room, that serve the people, that prepare the meals and so forth. So it's, it's, a, it's really a big deal in the communities because we pride ourselves in our dining facility. In the, we, we serve restaurant style meals. People come in and they order off the menu. They have a couple of choices of what they want to do. But, but we're adopting the patriotic theme this year. So we have a large Uncle Sam, that's life-size Uncle Sam, that's going to be in the lobby. We have bios of our dining services people, mm -hmm. quotes from our residents about the dining services. We're making a large, a large d dessert that's probably eight feet long that's going to be in the shape of a flag that the residents and staff will make together. And we're planning some other fun activities for that month. But it's all centered around dining. Now, you, what, 
What kind of menus do you have? For instance, what did you have yesterday? I wasn't there yesterday. Day before yesterday. <laughs> I can tell you this, okay? Uh -huh. I'll tell you the three meals. At breakfast time, there's always juice, there's always cereal, uh -huh. and there's always hot food. French toast, sausage, bacon. Once a month, there's always a buffet for the residents. Mm -hmm. At lunchtime, there's always a salad offered, a choice of a salad. There's two entrees. You can pick one of two. And then there's side dishes like mashed potatoes, rice, and so forth, plus dessert, coffee, and so forth. The evening meal, there's usually soup offered, plus it could be a sandwich, a casserole. There's two, um, two entrees that you can pick from, mm -hmm. as well as the soup and a dessert and a snack to take back. And if you're not happy with what's offered, you can always say, I don't like this. What kind of meat do you have in there? Could I have, you know, a club sandwich, could I have um, something else? They try to accommodate you. They'll, make, they'll give you right. they try to accommodate individual you. serving or something. Right. Like that. They don't want anybody to go away hungry and they want the dining experience to be something meaningful to them. It's, it's meant to be a social event for them. Because uh -huh. some people will go out a lot with their families and friends. Some come to the activities that I schedule for the month. But there's some people that still prefer to be in their room a great deal. Mm -hmm. So by coming to the dining room three times a day, they are getting some socialization. Whatever that, yeah. Uh, what do you think of Memory Garden? It, uh, which is laughable because it's for non-memory, really. It uh, basically deals with Alzheimer's. Right. Uh, well, I, th I, think that's, I think it's good. Because I think people with Alzheimer's, need a place where they can be, where they're in a safe environment, where they get special care, where people understand their needs. And sometimes when you get placed in with a lot of other people, they don't understand they it. They can't function. And, yeah. and it can be frustrating to the person with Alzheimer's. It can be agitating to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I think memory gardens is good. Good idea, concept anyway, right. the concept. Uh, we have a, a call, you want to take another call? Yes, sure. Okay, come on and call her, thank you for waiting. Good morning, folks. Uh, this is Doug Richmond calling in in reference to some remarks that were made by Doc Hamels. Okay, at sure. At the beginning of the show. Uh, I think he was referring to a certain ex-legislator. <laughs> <laughs> I, first of all, want to compliment Connie and Teresa on their fine work. Thank you. In the senior council, and uh, uh -huh. I'm sure you will continue that in great direction for us. One of the difficulties in reference to our taxes, uh, sales tax versus property tax, is that not to bore you with all of the calculations, but on the bottom line, for every one quarter of a percent of sales tax of income to this county, it equals $2.08 per thousand of property tax assessment. And a quick reference that identifies that a hundred thousand dollar assessed piece of property has to pay two hundred and eight dollars a year for each quarter of a percent sales tax reference well uh, before before you go on uh, maybe maybe you could explain something here the uh county legislature including greg who's outspoken on the subject are trying to get a sales tax increase but the legislature is uh, i mean the new york state legislature is adamantly against it that's true uh, it's very unfortunate yeah there's no sales tax coming period no in, no raise for example in one of my observations of discrimination to chautauqua county and that uh -huh. particular avenue is that Chautauqua County has the lowest sales tax in all of western New York. As an example, Cattaraugus County has 8%, Allegheny County has 8.5%, Erie County has 8.5%. It's my memory that neither of those three counties share any of their sales tax income with the local municipalities, which Chautauqua County does as well. The reference between the property tax and the sales tax equals out, just as a quick identity, of a $100,000 of assessment of this $208 tax that the property taxpayer pays equals $83,200 of personal purchased taxable items. I believe very few of us within the county even have $83,000 a year to pay in uh, purchasing items across the board. 
one of the other things that somehow has become a mis 